<laughs> yeah, I wonder, I'm wondering how many of them are not, you know, like, because I would never submit for that because I don't know anything about video. I, I know a little bit, but I don't know enough to actually take on a big job. But, you know, like I pointed you in the direction of my friend Pamela, and that's her job. That's what she does. So I'm like, she should do this. She's awesome yeah. at it. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how many incoming we have either. By the way, we're, we're live on my stream. Awesome. Uh, oh, here's Topher just in time. Um, yeah, we'll get started here in just a second after Topher gets acclimated. But, um, yeah, I don't know how many of those uh, requests our producer is getting, but a lot. I, I, I try to be extra clear that people need a certain amount of experience, but, you know, I think a lot of people, they just read those bullet points and they see one that they qualify for, and they mm -hmm. go, oh, this is the thing <laughs> for me, and so I think she's getting overloaded. <laughs> what is it you're trying to do, Trey? I missed this. Oh, well, we uh, have sort of a secret project, and we're, uh, Tom Anderson and I are going uh, around the world together, and we need a, um, a DP shooter to uh, join us. Uh, so we're taking uh, resumes, or mm -hmm. at least our producer is taking resumes to join our little uh, merry band. And um, so I put out a job description on Google Plus today, and it, uh, I guess it generated some buzz or something, because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's an around-the-world trip, <laughs> but we also we pay you and feed you and all that kind of stuff. Entertain you. Don't forget that part, because you guys are really good at that. <laughs> we are. We're a yep. barrel of laughs. I Trey, think so. Trey, what about Michael Mozart for it? <coughs> I saw that he might have sent in his resume. I don't know. He would be perfect for that. That sounds like the perfect job for him. Yeah. He would be another uh, uh, barrel of laughs along with us. <laughs> hey, Topher, how are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Hey, Topher. Good. 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 Um... Just a second, let me check my email here and see there's one more guy I might want to invite along. Oh, cool. By the way, I, I shared this publicly on my on my uh, deal. If you guys want to reshare it, or you don't have to. Um, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, done. It's already done. Are you all ready to go, Topher? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. Cool. Well, in about two minutes, I'll start it out for us. If you, if you like, I'll kind of introduce you guys and uh, <laughs> let you take it from there. Sounds good. How's my audio level and all that stuff? You sound great. Sounds yeah. good here. Awesome. Sounds good. So wait, what are we what are we sharing? So this isn't a post. We're just sharing the uh, the live on air, right? Yeah. yeah exactly. The player. Yeah. That's what I shared. Okay, the player. Okay, let me share that. He's a player. He's By the way, I'm going to let you guys do almost all the talking. I'll just do an introduction and then drift into the background. <clears throat> and you'll interject when needed, and you will be needed. <laughs> <laughs> Trey, do you have any sort of chat room or anything yet? Have you figured any of that stuff out? No. No, I haven't figured that out yet. I wish. I guess so people can talk in the uh, thread, though, huh? Oh, shoot. Where's... Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, made a, I just made a stupid email mistake. All right. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Usually I'm better than that. All right. So, are you guys all ready? Rock and roll. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, um, well, welcome everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in live. Uh, I'm down here in Austin, Texas, and we've got uh, a lot of people uh, that are involved with Stuck on Earth here uh, with us. We're going to have a little uh, community hangout and talk about what's going on. I'm really going to let them kind of run the show, and I'll, I'll drift softly into the background. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I am uh, really excited uh, about Stuck on Earth still. We're uh, doing great. Um, if you read the post, we, we very quickly passed uh, over 150,000 downloads, and that's huge for an iPad app. Um, it's really huge, in fact. Uh, we got all the way up to number two. Uh, we almost passed uh, Google Earth, but not quite. Uh, that was a, that's a tough, tough one to pass. But we did all right. And uh, I'm still using it all the time for my trips, um, and I'm constantly giving feedback to our development team. And we do read everything that happens in the community. 
and it's very important to us what you guys think, where you want to take the product going forward. Um, you know, we're a small team, and we're uh, we're happy to make changes and uh, and iterate this thing and make it even bigger and better. We've got all kinds of of plans. We don't always uh, tell everybody exactly what we're working on because we want to save a few surprises. Uh, but generally, we're pretty open with everything that's going on. And I really thank uh, everyone that's here in the Hangout for for helping out. They all help out in different ways, uh, big and little, and I appreciate all of it. And also, I appreciate everybody in the community for uh, uh, being there in Flickr and uh, talking to us and this and that. The, uh, the head of the Flickr... Um, uh, I guess community relations um, community manager. has been. What did you say, Thomas? His title is community manager. Flickr yeah, community manager. Community manager. Uh, we've been in email chat with him, but um, uh, he did not join us tonight. I was hoping he would, uh, but maybe he's on vacation or something like this, and we'll do something in the future. But I know that they, the guys over there at Flickr, are very interested uh, in what we're doing, and that is great because we. Uh, we like those guys. They are Maybe cool. he's afraid of Thomas Hawk, Trey. Yeah, he might have heard I'm that kidding. you're in here. <laughs> I'm joking. I yeah. I it's love like, Zach. Zach's a wonderful, wonderful gentleman. Yeah, it might be like that, that scene in, in Gladiator when, uh, you know, uh, Russell Crowe has got everything pretty well handled in the arena, and then all of a sudden the lion jumps out of the cage in the ground, <laughs> and it's Thomas Hawk. <laughs> on the leash. <laughs> Some oh. vitriol and flicker. I'm more like a pussycat, less like a lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so uh, I'll actually I'll let everyone introduce themselves. Uh, we don't have to go around circle or anything, but uh, first I want to introduce Topher Martini. Um, Topher is our <coughs> chief head editor. He's the man behind uh, all of these kind of uh, community happenings, and he has uh, worked tirelessly on this thing, and I appreciate him very much. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of basically let uh, Topher uh, and Karen or whoever wants to run the show, and and um, we are uh, we're very excited. So anyway, here you go, Topher. Go Great. for it. Great, thanks, Trey. And on behalf of the whole Stuck and Customs team or Stuck on Earth team, we really want to thank everybody for watching live and uh, watching this in the rebroadcast. My role on Stuck on Earth is the editor and community manager, and uh, this is a phenomenal product that so many of us are passionate about. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody in the Hangout, and uh, next on the list is Karen Hutton. Howdy, howdy. I'm Karen Hutton, and I'm the voice of the app. I'm the one that says, hello, Trey. <laughs> Only I'll say your name, or hello there. Anyway, um, very excited about this product and this, this app, and the, uh, the whole experience has just been fantastic. So we're excited to um, share a little bit more about it and get your feedback, and uh, and see where we can take it next. Who's next? So who's next? How about, how about you, Thomas? Thomas. Uh, okay, I'm Thomas Hawk uh, at thomashawk.com and at Google Plus is Thomas Hawk. Uh, I'm a huge, huge, huge Stuck on Earth fan, and it's a <laughs> wonderful application. I helped uh, make 50 secret spots in San Francisco where I detailed some of my favorite places to take photographs in San Francisco contributed that to the app. Uh, I think it's got a, uh, an amazing amount of potential as a resource for photographers. And I'm glad to be a part of, uh, of growing it and uh, seeing it grow. And next we'll have Nicole Young. Hi, I'm Nicole Young. I'm Nicole S. Young on Google Plus and you can find me at like Nicole Z, basically Nicole Z everywhere. But uh, I'm involved with the, the app just as a user. I got to get an early look at it uh, and when it was just in development and one of the beta testers. So, um, yeah, I'm just here to kind of, I guess, help out and, you know, give my feedback as somebody who just uses the app. So I like to travel, too. So, you know, it's a really good app for me. <laughs> Great. And last but not least, we have Joseph Lenashke. Hi there. Joseph Lenashke, uh, travel junkie uh, pretty much everywhere. It's travel underscore junkie and uh, photojoseph.com and also run apertureexpert.com and I am a friend of the family here, a photographer and a uh, travel aficionado and I have uh, many, many photos scattered all over the world on Stuck on Earth which is quite fun to dig through and, and find some of my shots buried in places. Uh, just to, you know, obviously enjoy shooting and enjoy seeing my work on here and enjoy seeing other people's work on here and it's a, it's a really cool app and a great way to see the world for sure. 
Yeah, especially when Stuck on Earth first launched, one of the big events was really developing the community. The app is really divided into three main sections. We have featured photos, which come from the Flickr universe with some smart algorithm to pull out the interesting and featured photos to, to present to the user. Next, we have community photos, which are those that have been contributed to the Flickr community for Stuck on Earth. And we periodically go through and curate and, and can you know, weed some out and, and promote some uh, through our third component, which is the top 50 lists. You know, Thomas did an excellent job with the San Francisco top 50 list. And you know, there's a lot of people trying to get behind that momentum. And uh, so Thomas, uh, maybe why don't you talk a little bit about what it was like to make a top 50 list? Yeah, I thought it was great. Um, you know, I've always been one that I'm trying to photograph the 100 largest American cities right now. And uh, I've got 31 of them done, but I've got 69 left to go. And one of the challenges for me anytime I go to a city is I have a limited amount of time there, and uh, I want to shoot, you know, the best photo opportunities, uh, the most interesting sort of, and not always the main thing, not always <laughs> the main tourist spot, but, you know, sort of really interesting, sometimes out of the way places. And I know as a local in San Francisco, um, uh, you know, I know where a ton of great places to shoot are. And, you know, just sort of informally over the years, I've had people that have come visited me in San Francisco, and I'll take them out shooting, and we'll go hit a lot of these great spots. Or likewise, uh, if I'm traveling uh, down in Miami, I, I might hook up with uh, my friends, you know, Michelle and Anna. Uh, you know, if I'm in uh, Memphis, hook up with my friend Sean Davis. And, and these guys will, you know, show me around a little bit and show me some of these spots. But that all sort of happens informally. And I've always wished that there was a great resource. Uh, some of it I've been able to get through Flickr in the past, but a Flickr is uh, good before you go on the trip when you can do some planning, but once you're out in the field, uh, it's not always quite as helpful. And so I, you know, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to share some of my knowledge of San Francisco, and really the hope is that a lot of other photographers will do the same thing. And you know, wherever they live, whether it's uh, Portland or... Seattle or Boise, Idaho or uh, Buenos Aires or wherever, that they'll take the time to curate these lists. And I think that helps all of us as photographers when we travel and we want to find interesting things to shoot. Um, I know I used it for our Death Valley trip that uh, Karen was on, uh, along with a number of other great photographers. And we found some really nice stuff to shoot uh, using the app, and we were able to look through there. I had never shot Death Valley before, and that was a perfect example where I could use the app. So I like giving into the app just like I like taking out of the app. I think it's wonderful. And that's the whole idea of the top 50 list, too. You know, you did a really good job, I think, with kind of the description and describing some of these behind-the-scenes spots. I believe there was a spot in San Francisco that Trey, you and Tom actually found through one of uh, Thomas's pictures. I'm sorry, yeah. you asked me a question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it was Trey. He was talking about the location that you and Tom Anderson found. Uh, On the top of the like, hotel? Yeah. Oh. The, uh, oh, right. Yeah, that was all because of Thomas. And actually, yeah. this, was, uh, this was before uh, the app was released. Um, by the way, I was distracted because I was reading the comments in the, uh, in the stream of, of this live broadcast. And the very first comment is, uh, what is stuck on Earth? So I guess <laughs> I didn't do a very good job of explaining it. Uh, <laughs> So let me let me just uh, say very quickly because I know there's I have a lot of followers that don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. I'll answer your question after I describe what Stuck on Earth is. I'm sorry I should have done that being a, a broadcast professional. So Stuck on Earth is an app that right now is only available for the iPad. Uh, yes, the, it, we have plans to make it for um, everything in the future except for the TRS-80 maybe. <laughs> And we, uh, uh, we built this sort of out of, out of a need uh, to find uh, quickly and efficiently some of the best places on Earth to take photos, both locally around where you live and when you travel, because this is a problem. How do you find the best places to shoot? So we built Stuck on Earth. It's got a very elegant uh, interface, and it has, is a very nice mix of crowdsourcing, uh, plus algorithm, plus human curation. So anyway, we have a nice little video if you just do a YouTube search for Stuck on Earth. 
uh, you'll hear Karen's dulcet tones describing exactly what the voice, what the app does in about uh, two minutes. But to answer that question, um, yes. Yeah, so uh, of course, I was using an early version of it because you know we're building it, and I used it on uh, I think three different trips um, to you know internationally, and we tweaked it over time, and then right before it came out, uh, right before it launched, I was using it in San Francisco. <laughs> And we had just gotten these human curated top 50 lists in. Thomas had one of the first, the top 50 secret spots in San Francisco. Uh, we pulled it up and I saw this amazing shot of San Francisco. I've been to San Francisco uh, probably 15 times. But I still have never had a photo of San Francisco that I really love. Until I saw this photo of Thomas's. And I thought, ah, I like that photo a lot. I kind of got the hint of what was in this exact location. And I thought, oh, okay, I want to go there. I don't want to get the exact same shot, but I want to get something close to it because I bet there's, I have my own interpretation of that scene that I would like to do. Um, and of course, it was geolocated, just like every photo in Stuck on Earth. So Tom and I went right there. We had a heck of a time uh, getting into this hotel. It wasn't easy because we looked powerful, suspicious walking in with all our gear. Uh, but we smooth talked our way up there. Um, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. But we got up there. I got a great photo, and to this day, it's my favorite photo of San Francisco. So I, uh, you know, as much as I like to thank the app, I I can't. I I really thank the people behind the app, and the people aren't just Thomas, but the people are uh, everyone in this hangout and all of you in the community because this is really a human powered app. Um, it's you know this this new idea of uh, crowdsourcing and human curation. There's something quite magical, and this is just the beginning. I can't wait to see everything else that happens. I'm sorry for that long answer. Go on uh, with the hosting <laughs> duties, Topher. Well, and what comes next is a great segue. Um, Nicole S. Young, you know, we have a top 50 list coming from her, hopefully pretty soon. Yeah, I'm working on one for uh, Utah. I'm I'm. <laughs> I've been kind of dragging my feet on it, haven't I? But uh, yeah. So, did you have did you have something else you wanted to add to that? Well, yeah. Why don't you describe a little bit about the process you're going through to make one of those top 50 lists? Right. Well, it's it takes it takes a little bit of time, you know, because you want to get you want to get good photos and you want to find places that aren't just all the cliche spots. I lived in Utah for two and a half years, and you know, when people think of Utah, you might think of Delicate Arch or the Great Salt Lake. Those are two really big spots. There are a lot of really great photos that you'll find, you know, on Flickr or wherever. But I also want to, I, I obviously want to include some of those, but I want to find the places that aren't so familiar but are absolutely gorgeous and that people might, you know, just come out with a beautiful photo, even if it doesn't look necessarily like Utah, it's just a gorgeous photo. So and I'm also trying to find places that are good for portrait photographers to take, because there, there's a huge photography community in the Salt Lake County, and so just within that, there will probably be a large group of the photos that will come from that area, because that's a, where a lot of the people will be coming from. So I want people to find beautiful backdrops for their, for their portrait photographs and wedding photographs and all of these other types of things. So, Are you curating out of your own photographs, or are you finding no, others? On I'm finding photos. others. I'm not using, mm -hmm. I don't even think I'm using any of my photos, unless mm -hmm. I happen to have a, a photo of something that I can't find and I want to share with the community. So for the most part, I, I, and I think that's encouraged, right, to not use our own photos, Absolutely. but to use other people's photos. Well, I ask that because, Thomas, you did mostly yours, but then you shoot, I mean, 9,000 photos a day, so. Yeah, I had, I had like, I've got, I don't know, I've got like 40,000 photographs of San Francisco, so I had more than enough uh, to kind of pull my own together. Uh, I think, you know, if Nicole uh, did her own photos, though, uh, people might get pretty hungry while they look at them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd all be of, like, my apartment, you know? <laughs> it's like, come to my apartment and you'll get sit It'd be them. like, you know, yeah, I'd, get, I'd, I'd work up quite an appetite looking at those photos. <laughs> so you basically then put in some search parameters and then just kind of comb through and then put aside the ones that you think are most likely to of the yeah. various parameters. <laughs> I, think that's that's what, I think that's kind of the general, yeah, behind it. That's kind of how it works. So, mm -hmm. I'm excited. Utah's the you, uh, Salt Lake's the next city I'm going to shoot. So, oh, cool. Yeah, you hurry up <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, now I have motivation to get it done. But no, it's it's gorgeous there. It's a beautiful place to live, and that's my goal. I can live wherever I want. So I'm just kind of hopping from beautiful places. <laughs> I'm living in Seattle right now. So. 
That's very cool. Uh, I've had people ask, because they say, well, some people have all their own photographs, and but I'm, I'm telling them no, that you're not necessarily. So thank you for explaining that, because sure. a lot of people were wondering. Yeah, that works. and for the top 50 lists in general, there's three kind of primary buckets that they fall into. There's the top 50, you know, spots on a specific location, you know, top 50 spots in, one, in London or a specific geographic market. Thomas, on the other hand, did our secret spots, which are, you know, the places off the beaten path that you might not ordinarily know or just, you know, see passing by. The third is kind of the top 50 things. So these could be things like waterfalls, bridges, some sort of thematic element that you'll see all across Earth. Um, and in Nicole's case, you know, it's a great job to reach out to your fellow photographers, especially now that you're moved on into Seattle. It's a great experience to kind of maintain those connections back in Utah and help get some of those, you know, photographers we might not have heard of promoted through Stuck on Earth. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, can I jump in for a second, um, Topher? Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I want to encourage everybody that's watching. Uh, Thomas is a little bit of an exception, like we were saying, where he used 50 of his own photos. Really, generally, we uh, don't want you to do that um, unless you're, um, you know, just a genius photographer like Thomas. Uh, but um, it, it's best and easiest, frankly, if you know your city pretty well, right? And it doesn't matter if you have a big city or a small city or if you're in the U.S. or not. We want uh, top 50 lists in every uh, you know, interesting city around the world. And we actually like to have two top 50 lists for each city. The top 50 must-sees in that city, which are kind of, you know, frankly, some of the tourist spots. Um, you, know, you know, if you're in Paris, you want to see where the Moulin Rouge is, right? Of course. Um, and you want to see all the other main things in the city. Uh, but then also, if you can, you could do a top 50 secret spots. And just like Topher was saying, it's great if you can go find other people's photos in Flickr, and that way it drives a lot of attention to them. Um, you know, if you curate the list, it'll say, you know, curated by blah blah blah, so you'll have your name up there, and and uh, people can follow you, and 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 this sort of situation. Um, so yeah, it's something that everyone can get involved with. Um, if you want to know how to make your own top 50 list, just uh, ask Topher or look inside of our. Uh, our Flickr community and Stuck on Earth. Um, it does take a little while. It's going to take you uh, uh, a couple hours of work to find really good photos that represent your city. It's not a super easy thing, uh, but um, you know that's what human curation is all about. It's uh, you already have a huge head start as to, opposed to somebody that's not even from that city. So um, it's great fun, and I, I invite you to do it. It would be it would be great. Yeah. One big piece of feedback we've received from people is that when they go into Flickr, there's not enough photos from wherever their city is. And it's a great you know, time and opportunity to organize a photo walk. You know, on Google Plus, we have tons of photo walks all over the place. And if you're in you know, your small village or your big city, it's a great opportunity to mobilize photographers around you. So we'd really encourage the community to get on board for that, too. So Joseph. You know, you're kind of new to the Stuck on Earth experience and, you know, hopefully going to do a top 50 list of your own. What are your kind of, you know, first responses and reactions? Well, there's, obviously there's the approach you're talking about of, of the places I've lived or somewhere I've lived so that I know the area really well and I can dig around in it. Um, but I think another interesting approach might be looking at places that I'm about to go to. Because, like, we all already know one of the great uses of this app is to look at somewhere we're going to go before we get there and figure out what's cool to see. And it can, we could see a photo on here that looks like an amazing place and then go there and realize, you know, it really isn't that amazing. This photographer that got that shot just happened to find that one perfect little moment, little place to be. But maybe most people wouldn't find that. So maybe that's not the best kind of secret place. Maybe we would find something that's a little bit more accessible. Um, so going into a new city with a list like that armed with a list and then walking around to see what uh, what comes out of it could be actually quite cool. I'll have to think about that next time I'm going somewhere new. Yeah, it is really an integral part of trip planning. You know, whether you're a photographer or just traveling abroad, you know, one of the most fun experiences with Stuck on Earth is just going around the map, you know, searching a random city you might even never go to and just seeing, you know, all the pictures that show up around there. So. Do, yeah, you know what's really nice about traveling with it in the field? is that uh, if you plan your trip with it and you plan all the spots you're going to hit, uh, then when you're out in the field, even if you don't have internet, even if 
if you're disconnected, you still have your sort of uh, map and your things that you're going to shoot. Yeah, that's well. actually, let me ask that question. Um, I know if you say you add it to your trips, then images get, get cached in there, but how much gets cached in? Is there a limit to what gets cached in there? Can you just say, get me you know, the top 1,000 photos from this location or anything like that? Because, yeah, if I'm traveling somewhere international, chances are I'm not going to have uh, Wi-Fi access or even 3G access. Yeah, so that brings up a good point. When you make a trip, all of the photos and metadata do get stored locally. So when you're in airplane mode or don't have connectivity, you can still view those photos and look at them. We're only storing the large size of that photo, which is the 1024 by 768 or thereabout image. So it shouldn't consume too much. Uh, is your question more about just how do I get like you know the top thousand photos in this area or right exactly so from from what you're saying it sounds like the photos that I look at so ones I've already seen are going to be there but if I haven't looked at it yet then of course it's not going to be there so yeah is yeah. there a way to say just get me a thousand photos from Istanbul the you know mo top thousand photos most popular thousand photos most looked at whatever something like that so that when I am on the plane and I haven't had time to deal with it beforehand I can flip through them or I'm standing you know there and I don't have access. I can still look at them. Yeah, so right now it doesn't think, I don't think there is a way to do that, but I think that's a great feature request that we can hopefully, you know, kind of pre-populated search data is kind of what it sounds like you're looking for. Yeah, it's always the, for me, most of my travel is international, is the travel that I find, you know, that th tends to be the stuff that I'm going to go out and shoot and I'm going to use this for. And so, of course, doing it ahead of time is great. You're doing it from the hotel where you have access, but once you're out in the field, um, and maybe it's a little bit less important on the iPad version because you know I don't have a 3G iPad. I'm not used to having all the time access on my iPad. But uh, if it's coming to other devices, then that would be amazing to be able to be on my iPhone looking at that all the time. But you know, even without access, would be great. Yeah, yeah. I have a question hey, along Topher, those let me lines. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, no, Trey. Go, go ahead, Nicole. Oh. Ladies first. <laughs> well, I was going to say, along with the caching of the photos, is there a way to cache the map along with that? Because I know that usually when you don't have data, then the you know maps don't load. And if I were to go on a trip, the map is going to be the more important thing to you know. I'm, if, even if I could see a small thumbnail, I'd mm -hmm. rather have that map than I than the the photo. You know, than a large size photo. Correct. With every photo, there's a little description drawer that pops out, and that's the name of the photo, a link back to the original, you know, uh, posting on Flickr, the description, and then exactly what you're talking about, kind of a mini map with the GPS data in the lower right. Okay. So all that data should be there. And hey, even better. Gino Barrasso's in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> hey, what Gino. About Gino. Gino. Ready to invite him? Well, no, he had a question, uh, that, though that would be good. Uh, no, Gino had a, th had a question about how you submit to this top, to a top 50 list. Uh, he doesn't know how he would submit. Uh, how does, if someone wants to do a top 50 list, what, what do they do? What's, how do you do that? Yeah, so the best way is to create a gallery within your own Flickr account, and you'll be going across the whole Flickr universe and coming together to pull that 50 images. Once those 50 images are available, you know, post a thread in the Flickr discussion group, and that way other people can take a look at the photos and maybe you know, make recommendations on ones to swap out. Once it gets to a point where we think you know, this is a top quality you know, list, we then go and put it into the app. Um, and that process involves putting it on Trey's account. Now, aren't galleries limited to 15 photos, though? You'd have to break it up. Uh, 18. Um, so yeah. typically what we tell people to do is do it in three parts. So three parts. And if they want to include some of their own photos, you could make a set that of your own photos that would replace one of those galleries. You know, if, no. Flickr was if Flickr was actually here right now, we could probably attack them over that limitation. <laughs> <of all. laughs> we'll I, I have a quick for question. For, for people who actually have submitted their photos to the community, how do people know when, if, if or when they're used in either just the app or in a, in a fit top 50 list? Is there a way for them to find out other than, you know, scanning through their <laughs> the entire world? <laughs> Yeah, so with the community photos, anything that gets uploaded into the community pool on Flickr will show up in the app. We do have a small bug right now where, that we're tracking down with Flickr, so this will probably be for the next episode as well. But, you know, it's that there's a, a random delay that some people are seeing. If they upload maybe 10 images, you know, a couple of them might take, you know, a couple of days to show up or maybe even never. So we're really working hard to try to figure out uh, what we can do with Flickr to make that not happen. Now. Once it's in the pool, and once you go into the app, when you select the community photos, you should just be able to see your photo, you know, almost right away. 
if you're in a densely populated area like you know San Francisco, for example, there might be some competition, you know, for that <laughs> specific GPS coordinate. Mm -hmm. um, but for a top 50 list, um, you would see actually when someone makes that list that your photo would show up in that gallery. So you would get the Flickr notification, user, you know, X, you know, put you into a top 50 list. Okay. Yeah, and if you are in San Francisco and you're having a hard time getting your San Francisco photo bumped up in the Flickr algorithm, just make sure that the next one you do has a picture of a cat in it. Because those, <laughs> that's what those do. <laughs> on Flickr, they love those. It's like, yeah. if you've got a cat in it, maybe down in the corner, you know, something like that. Bump it right well, to the top. That's the other part of it, too, is it's a lot of what shows up is based on popularity. Right? Correct. In Flickr? And that's actually one of the other things we're working on is, you know, interesting photos to us might not be interesting photos to the Flickr community. Um, and so we're coming up with a lot of different filters we can do to condense down and kind of weed out some of those photos that don't make sense for Stuck on Earth. And that's something we're continuing to work on and will hopefully evolve over time. The secret island of cats. <laughs> <laughs> Just adjacent to Treasure Island. The 50 top yeah. cat boxes of yeah. Island X. <laughs> hey, can I ask, uh, I want to ask Joseph a question uh, yeah. about a particular uh, use case that he mentioned because oh, I, I used the app before I went to Yosemite and, and so did Robert Scoble and, and we were sitting there at, at breakfast and he came up with an idea that's not too different than what Joseph was talking about. But let me ask about the specific use case. So really, uh, the way that I have been using the, the app, and I guess about the only way to use the app, is my own use case where I plan out a trip ahead of time. And I go through and I, I look through usually hundreds, usually less than a thousand, but about four or five hundred of the top photos in an area. Like right? I zoom in to wherever, Prague, and it shows me a bunch of really good photos, and then I flip through them, and then I say, add to my Prague trip. Okay? And when I say add to trip, it saves them. So then I end up caching, um, storing locally, uh, several dozen places that I want to go while I'm there. Um, but you said something different, and it's not that different than what Robert said, is you would just like to be able just to store a thousand of the best photos from the area without having to go through them so that you could look at them later when you're offline. So this is certainly possible. It's going to have to be sort of an explicit thing that you choose, though. You're going to have to say, like, give me 500 of the best photos from this area. And that download, it could take 5 to 20 minutes. Um, what, do you, what do you think of that experience? Is that, do you know that you're kind of getting into that area? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's acceptable, especially because you're saying, well, if you can say, give me, you know, 100 or 500 or 1,000 photos, and the thing pops up and says, hey, just so you know, this might take, you know, 15, 20 minutes, make sure your iPad doesn't go to sleep or whatever, then I think that's fine because I don't need to sit there and babysit it. You know, other than making sure it's not going to sleep, I can go off and do other things, and that's going to get me a bunch of photos in a much quicker amount of time than as if I was going through them manually and going, oh, I'll, I'll add that one, don't like that one, don't like that one, I'll add that one. And if there are, I don't know that much about Flickr, but if there's a way for, for it to say, you know, show me the most popular. So I don't know, I guess most viewed on Flickr. I don't know what kind of information you can get from Flickr. But if it's most viewed or most popular or most liked or whatever and grab those, then that's, that's ideally what I want. You know, I want the ones that everybody else has already looked at and said, yeah, this is great. So I've got, you know, crowdsourced, basically I've crowdsourced the entire curation process. Um, I'll take the, what the community as a whole says is the best thousand photos and just give me those. And then I think you would have to you'd have to way of, have a way of limiting it to where what your region is. Like if I well okay you said Prague, right? So I could zoom way way in and find a, a you know a city center or a little a square in Prague or something and maybe zoom out a little bit and say give me the best hundred photos that from this view on the map and that's it. Great. Or zoom out a little bit farther and say I, I guess basically it comes down to just show me what's you know on this map. So if I zoom out so I see all of the Czech Republic, then it's going to give me the top thousand for the Czech Republic. If I zoom in to you know, fill the map with Prague, it gives me that. If I zoom into a particular building, it's going to give me the closest thing that's right there. Um, but yeah, you want to be able to isolate the areas. And even there too, if, I'm, if I know, okay, I'm going to go to this place, this place, and this place, I want to zoom in close and just get photos from that specific region. I don't want photos from all of the Czech Republic, so I'm not going to the whole place, but I know I'm going 
to this place, and I'm going here and here, and I can just kind of isolate those areas and download them in advance. I like that idea. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Especially when, you know, I'm at home, I've got a really fast connection here, right? This is great. I know it's going to take 15, if it takes 15 minutes here at home, it'll take three hours in a hotel somewhere, right? So I'd, I'd much rather just get it done now. And if I can do that, it's just one of my checklist things before I go on my trip, make sure I populate stuck on earth with a bunch of photos from where I'm going. It's just something that I don't have to deal with before I go except to tap a couple of keys. And then when I'm on the plane, I've got 12 hours on the plane. I know I've got a lot to look at while I'm there. That's a really okay. good idea. Mm -hmm. Hey, Topher, Chris Poss is asking in the uh, thread if you guys have any plans to move beyond Flickr, like looking at Google Plus or 500 Picks or whatever, uh, you know, there's other places to get data from. Mm -hmm. As the community is right now, we are dependent on Flickr. Um, as far as future plans, Trey's probably the best person to speak about that. So, Trey, over to you. Uh, yes, I would be the best person to say something about that, <laughs> wouldn't I? <laughs> well, yes, boss, you would be. Yeah, so uh, we do want to be agnostic as to where we pull the photos from. Uh, Flickr's API was so easily accessible, and there's a lot of rich data there already, even though we do depend on that interestingness algorithm, which sometimes gets a little slippery, like you might, you might zoom in too far you know, and it's kind of like the dwarves in the mines of Moria. If you go too deep, you might awaken the Balrog, <laughs> and you might see some shirtless dude shaving, wearing. Does a anybody know where Trey comes up with this stuff? That, that's what I want to know. Um, <laughs> the scary so, thing is, yes, I read the same stuff. I just can't remember any of it like he does. <laughs> and, and of course, the shirtless dude shaving's got a cat sitting behind him. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, and he may be shaming the cat. Now, <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, we don't really like that very much. And so that's one of the shortcomings with Flickr. We still love Flickr, but it's got these shortcomings with interestingness. Um, we have been talking with the uh, Panoramio team. You know, that was acquired by Google. We've been having extensive conversations with them. Um, we haven't talked to the 500px guys, um, although we'd be happy to. I, I know them. We just haven't uh, discussed this stuff yet. And I don't know, frankly, if 500px has as many photos as Flickr or if they're all geolocated as well as Flickr. They, they uh, might that would be another great source. They have, I think that the quality of photos on 500 yeah. pixels is going to surpass what's on Flickr. Just, oh, there's know, no doubt about it, yeah. So that yeah. there would be a good reason. But yeah, I don't know if they have uh, geo... I don't know if you can geotag your photos through there. I think it's well, embedded in the file. I mean, why couldn't... I mean, why yeah, wouldn't you? it's probably already in the EXIF. But then yeah. we have a problem with Stuck on Earth in that, like, let's say you zoom into the, Los An the greater Los Angeles area. It's hard for us to know which source to pull from because we would be pulling from Flickr, Panoramio, and 500px. Um, you know, that's a lot of different API calls, which could slow it down, even if they're all fired off asynchronously. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a decision process on our part, like who do we want to, who do we want to go with? Now, I know Panoramio has great photos. Um, their interface is a little bit different, though, in that they kind of give equal weighting to all areas. Like, you're just as likely to see a photo in one area as you are another. And that's kind of one nice thing about Stuck on Earth is that if you zoom into an area, you'll start to see clusters of pins around certain areas. And these clusters indicate where the most interesting stuff is. Uh, so even without uh, looking at a single thumbnail, you just know that there's something interesting happening in this one area. And that's, that's kind of nice. Another problem you're going to run into is finding duplicates because I'm sure most of you do the same thing I do and end up pushing the same photos to different places like Google Plus, to Flickr, SmugMug, uh, and so on. And, and if, there are, if you're pulling from all those places simultaneously, you will hit a lot of duplicates and you'd have to have some pretty clever algorithms to sort through those. So, Trey, why not come up with your own uh, photo sharing site specifically for Stuck on Earth? <laughs> In your spare time, of course. Yeah, <laughs> just, you know, while you're, you know, doing everything else. <laughs> yeah, it's it's too. I don't want to make a photo sharing site. We, I think, I see us more like a Flipboard, right? Where we are an intelligent, beautiful interface for rich data that other people are already collecting. Uh, you know, all these other sites do such a great job of 
having a community of photographers like 500px. That's a it's a whole discipline in itself, and I don't really want to. I don't really want to compete with those guys, and they already do such a good job anyway. I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to get into that space. And, and the big combination for Stuck on Earth is great photos and geolocation data. You know, geotagging is at the heart of the product and the heart of the experience. And um, you know, Thomas and Joseph, I know both of you have a lot of experience with geotagging and GPS collection. You know, can you speak about that for how it works in your workflow? Sure, I'll go first. Um, there are a couple of different ways. I'm a Canon shooter, so unfortunately for me, that means that there's no easy plug a GPS device onto my camera like there is with Nikon's. Um, it's it's one of the only things you got over me, Trey. Uh, <laughs> but that's uh, that means that I have to do it manually. So either depending on how accurate I want to be and how anal retentive I want to be about it, either I'll carry a GPS receiver with me and then marry the data using aperture, which is really quite straightforward and easy to do, um, but it's just a couple extra steps. Or I will just, using places in Aperture, just drag them on kind of generically. So if I uh, was walking around Venice, for example, and I have shots from all over Venice, I'm not going to go through and find where every photo was taken. I'm just going to take the whole group and drop it onto the center of Venice, which is not ideal for something like this, right? It's fine for when I'm looking on my own maps and I say, show me the pictures I shot in Venice, but it de definitely is not good for this. Um, but if, you know, if I take the time to, it, to do it, then I can very specifically go in and drag the Pin, uh, drag the photo exactly where I want it to be in uh, in aperture in places, and then from there once I export it, all that all that geo data gets added to it. Uh, but it certainly is more accurate if I bother to carry my GPS device and marry the data later. Yeah, I use uh, GeoTagger in Google Earth. Um, I don't want to carry around a unit. I don't want to worry about syncing up the camera time with the time on the unit, and then trying to merge the files later and all that. So I just, uh, I'm getting lazier and lazier. I probably have about maybe 60% of my photographs uh, geotagged at this point. And so if it's easy, I'll do it. If it's not easy, I won't do it. You know, if I'm shooting around Union Square in San Francisco and I'm all, you know, basically in the same area, that's pretty easy. You know, if I edit 50 photos from there and I just drag, you know, I just put the pinpoint in Google Earth and then I just drag them over the geotagger app and it just geotags all the files for me. Um, you know, if I'm driving around shooting neon signs in some unfamiliar city one by one by one, I'm probably just not going to geotag this. Hmm. Yeah. The um, thing, Thomas, you had said, I don't know if this is still true in Flickr, but you had said that, um, because you can also geotag photos in Flickr, sure. but when you, but if you download them, that doesn't retain the geotag data, right? Well, it's it's crazy. I've been telling people for years, do not geotag your photos on Flickr. Because that's, you know, geotag your photos at the file level. Because you want that location data to live with your photo, with your file. When you upload it to Flickr, it will automatically populate that geotag on Flickr. But if you spend all your time geotagging everything on Flickr, uh oh. Uh oh. And then all, all, all the styling. Sudden fiber. Thomas. Flickers. I mean, Thomas. Come back. And now, you know, Flickr's dead, and we're on to the next thing. And. Uh oh. Did I lose you? I yeah, think you might be out for a little bit. Got a big, big old lag time. I think you're back. Uh, I'm a little delayed, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Geotagging your data when you do it in Flickr versus the actual file itself. That's where we left off. I think we're going to lose him. <laughs> I think basically he was saying that the problem is if you do it in Flickr and then Flickr goes away, uh, you right. lose all that data. Right, so, and it's a, yeah, it's it's better a to do lot it. of work. Well, it's yeah. interesting because I used, I had not, I'm so busy <laughs> in my life these days that I've been meaning and meaning and meaning to upload photos for Stuck on Earth, and I finally did it over the weekend, um, geotagged, and I'm, I'm like so detail-oriented. I really went for the you know, for, for it's exactly here so that it would be helpful. Um, <clears throat> but that's tricky, you know, if you're shooting out in the wilderness somewhere, so you just try to get close. But even then, when I upload to Flickr, it still wants to verify. And then sometimes it gets the address right and sometimes it doesn't. Even though the I know that the latitude and longitude is right. But, mm -hmm. you know, it, it put... Um, a couple of our shots from Death Valley, it asked me, it was verifying that it was in fact that at this cross street in Paris. And I was like, <laughs> 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 no, 
No, actually it isn't. How were you geotagging them on your computer? I, I was doing it with GeoTagger and Google Earth, like Thomas does it. And so it had that info, and, you know, like I did, I don't know, a few from Death Valley, and like say three out of the four went up no problem, but then the fourth one was in Paris, and mm -hmm. I don't really know why that was. Yeah, but, you I, know, we just corrected it. And I, I actually ran into the same thing just, uh, I was just, because I, ha I haven't really been able to geotag my photos. Well, I shouldn't say I haven't been able to. I just haven't really had the right platform. I don't use Google Earth, which I actually am very unfamiliar with geotagging. The majority of my photos are stock photos, so they're posed photos of people or food photo you know, food photographs, so right. I don't really need to geotag those images. But for Stuck on Earth, it's kind of getting me into this, you know, this mm -hmm. momentum of I want to geotag my photos. I think it's really cool. And now Lightroom 4 Beta just came out, and there's a map feature on it, and I think it's similar to Aperture, which I don't use. But I'm able to actually geotag and embed that data into my metadata, which is nice. But I also I ran into the same thing you did, Karen. With you put them on Flickr, and it doesn't pop up immediately that it has the you know for me it just it was like oh you know put these on a map. So I clicked the button, and sometimes it would say you want to put them here. Now a lot of my geotags were very gen general areas because I was in Vietnam and. I knew I was in Sapa, but I didn't know where I was trekking. It was somewhere in the middle of, you know, on a mountain somewhere. I don't even know where it was. I, even if I could find it on a map, I wouldn't know if that was right or not. Right. So, but it was still, it wasn't even, you know, some of them didn't even recognize that I had any metadata, geotech metadata in there, even though I knew it was there. So it was, it was kind of, you know, that might just be the Lightroom 4 software because it is in beta and it's still new. Right. So. That's pretty cool that it's in there, though, because yeah, I've, I've got Lightroom 3, but um, that does me no good in this department. But yeah, the whole geotagging thing, man, If you when you're <laughs> learning it, it's like anything else. It just is time consuming yeah. so, you, so you get a nice flow going. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and Aperture, for anybody else who is watching it, just if you haven't played with it, it is it is really easy, and that's, that is kind of the feature of putting into Lightroom 4, which I haven't played with yet, so I don't <laughs> compare it, but um, in Aperture, it's just this thing called Places, and you bring up a map, and you can zoom in on the map as close as you want uh, to that exact street corner if you like or whatever and just drag your photos onto that point on the map and that gets what, geotagged. What is, there, what is that map powered by? Is that a Google Earth map or a Bing it's a map? Google, it's it? Google. Google, um, whatever, the regular Google satellite view. Mm -hmm. Well, you can switch views, but it's Google. Google Maps. And then when you share to Flickr from Aperture, because there's a Flickr button in Aperture, it just pushes it up. And so when you're talking about it verifying the location data, I've never even seen that before. So all of my places photos, my geotagged photos in Aperture, go up and that's it. That, that's the really? end of the story. Uh -huh. When I log into to Flickr, uh, I can see any photo that's been geotagged. It has a little map up in the top right corner, but it never verifies anything. It's just, hmm. it's there. Well, it was when, it was when I was uh, moving it over to the Stuck on Earth community. Somewhere in that process, it asked me that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It never happened to you? Mm -hmm. oh. hmm. Yeah, one thing we've seen when people are actually geotagging their photos in Flickr, there are different privacy levels that you can set for the geolocation data between just your contacts, your friends and family. And, uh, you know, it was really interesting walking through that with you, Karen, from the whole process, from mm -hmm. how to get photos into Flickr, how to add geotag and metadata, how to get them in the Stuck on Earth community, and then ultimately how do you get them in the app. And I think that experience really highlighted a way that we can do a better job kind of streamlining it and also explaining it, whether it be through tutorial videos or better FAQs and how-to articles. But at the end of the day, you know, making it really simple from the point you take a photo to the point you can view it in Stuck on Earth. Well, that's what I'm here for, Topher. I'm here to represent the common person <laughs> who just doesn't know. And it's an act because I know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for walking me through that because uh, it helped my acting chops a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Definitely. it's an inter it's an interesting process. And then you've got the button on the lower right, you know, with the arrow, where you can upload, which for some reason, I don't know if it was my connection or whatever this morning, it didn't, didn't work when I had a, like a minute to try it, um, where you can upload directly to the app. Am I, was that correct? Yeah. There's kind of two main ways that you'll upload photos to Stuck on Earth. One of them, which is how most people are doing it, is directly within the application itself. There's a little arrow in the bottom right. It pops up a Flickr authentication window. You enter in your login and password, and then you have access to your Flickr account to upload photos and add them to the group. The other way, which is what uh, Karen and I ran through, was actually using the main Flickr website. And uh, when I talked earlier about some people not seeing their photos show up right away, we've seen some discrepancies between people who upload through the application versus those through the desktop browser. 
So uh, if you're running into those issues, we definitely, you know, seeing if it happens one way or the other would be very helpful. So hmm. Nicole, kind of back to your Utah Top 50 list, mm -hmm. you know, kind of where are you now and what are the next steps for you? Um, uh, what do you mean, like with the, the, with the, uh, the list or after the list? Well, kind of both. With the list, kind of yeah. how many of those 50 images do you feel you have a good handle on? Are you working with other photographers? Or are you kind of just going through Flickr searches or how are you going about it? Yeah, well, it's it's most I've done the I've called out to the community, the, the people I know in Utah, to say, hey, if you have photos, you know, put them here, put them in the Stuck on Earth community, so it's easy for me to find them. And mm -hmm. I've only gotten a few people to do that. I think honestly, I think that the barrier is the geotagging because if mm -hmm. you don't, if it's not a part of your normal workflow, which I think for a lot of portrait photographers and you know people like me who I don't really go out and do any kind of trekking where I need to find my uh, my you know my locations or whatever your reason is for geotagging. I think that's kind of the barrier for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. I didn't get a whole lot of um, response with that and I think I just probably just need to plug it more but um, you mentioned going in through like having photo walks and there's a very large photo walking community in Utah called Photo Walking Utah and I'm actually going to, now that you said that, I need to go through that Flickr group because I'm like there are so many photos in there that I now I have this like great huge pool of photos from really great photographers to go through. So that's actually going to be my very next step is to look specifically in that pool and um, and then of course I'll expand and I'll search for more throughout. You know, I've, it's just been a it's just been a for me it's just been a been very busy traveling and haven't really you know set aside the time to do it. But you know, like uh, Trey said, it only it's a couple hours of work, but it's only a couple hours, and I know I'll be able to do it. So I'm going to get that done and then probably start looking at other types of top 50 list things that, um, may, you know, I was just in Vietnam, maybe I'll find uh, top 50 Viet places in Vietnam. I didn't, you know, I've only been there once, but I got a really good, you know, <laughs> went through the entire country practically, it felt like, so uh, maybe I'll do something like that for people. I to got some photos for you then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question, which is, um, again, a common man question. Um, which has to do with when you find someone on Flickr that you want to include, um, what do you have to get in touch with them, get their permission, get them to resize their photograph if it's not the right? No, we don't have to do that. Actually, I know that now. Like, what's what's the, what are the parameters for using other people's work like that? For uh, the licensing, you're saying, or just well, for well, let's say I find you know gosh, Bob Smith got the perfect photo for my area and I'd like to use that and I can put it in my gallery all day long but we have to get mm -hmm. permission or maybe he's got uh, um, common... I'm going blank well, on the well, name. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, the application really is just a web browser in a way. So to the extent that anybody puts their photo on Flickr and they geotag it, they're saying anybody can look at this photo whether it's Chrome or Safari or, mm -hmm. you know, Firefox or Stuck on Earth. I mean, this is just a very fancy browser. I don't think there's any licensing issues uh, at all. Uh, I wouldn't think... You don't even have to get someone's permission to no, do it. You can no, do it. I wouldn't I think mean, it's you promotion would. for them. Absolutely. Okay, no, yeah, but that's not the point. It's You can never say that it's promotion for them. They should be grateful for it. That's, what, that's the argument that gets you in trouble all over the place. I know, uh, but so. the argument that this is effectively a browser, that's exactly it. These, They're not doing anything other than looking at the pictures that are already on Flickr. It's just another browser like Chrome or Safari or anything else. That's all it is. Right. Here's another question. Gina Barasa also asked this, and I was curious about this myself. Is there well, why a don't way? He could ask himself Actually, Gina, since he has magically... He, oh, there he is. Oh, my God. Gina, <laughs> ask your question. Right from the horse's mouth. Oh, okay. Whoa. Be careful wow. of that. Well, the jackass's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> well, um, that was speaking to me, not you, Karen. Um, Thank you for clearing that up. Yes. I, <laughs> yeah. Look, I just downloaded it while you guys were talking. And guess what? Guess who I heard? Whose melodious tones came across as I uh, <laughs> opened the app? <laughs> the wonderful Karen Hutton. Hello, Gino. Yeah, I know. It was, was kind of creepy. I was like, oh, stop it. My wife's in the room. Anyway. <laughs> I've heard that so much. Yeah. I haven't gotten any marriage proposals, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, my question was, as I was cruising through it, I was noticing, uh, like in Austin, for example, there's somebody, I don't know who it is, but he goes by Definitive HDR, and how could I, is there a way that I could search just for 
definitive HDRs work no matter where he took the picture, what city it, it is in. Well, yeah. Every user on Stuck on Earth and Flickr, you can actually follow their work. And there's a section for all the people you're following. So I believe it's the orange pin when you go through. If you pull up one of their photos and go look at the description, there should be a little follow button below their name. Okay. All right, so is there some way I could like type in definitive HDR search for or something like that? Um, the best way would probably be find one of their photos and, and go just do that way and do it. All right, sounds good. Great. And also new to the Hangout is uh, Lisa. So why don't you uh, give us a brief introduction about yourself? Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Cool. Loud and clear. Lisa. I was muted for a minute because uh, I have a cat running around. Uh, I'm uh. Lisa. I am a Googler. I have met Trey at a couple of his walks here on the Google campus in Mountain View. Um, my latest project is I actually found this 35 millimeter disposable camera <laughs> in my car. Um, it was intended to take pictures of a crash that I haven't yet gotten into, but now since we have smartphones, we can take pictures with those. Uh, so I've been running around taking pictures with a 35 millimeter camera for about a week or so, and it's actually been really liberating. I don't have to look down to see what the picture looks like. I don't have to actually focus anything or set anything up. It's just kind of like click and move on. Well, hopefully you'll upload those to Stuck on Earth soon. Well, when we have it for Android, I will be the first one to upload 35 <laughs> millimeter <laughs> pictures. <laughs> There's pressure there. Yeah, we can't expect somebody that works at Google to formally in endorse some sort of uh, bastard iPad app. <laughs> <laughs> Even, even though Trey is a big Android uh, user himself. Yeah, I love my uh, new Google Nexus phone. Uh, it completes me. Who does? <laughs> yeah, I was actually skeptical. I thought it was too big, but now I'm liking it a lot. There's a lot you can do with it. And the camera's not bad either. Whoa, hello. <laughs> what are you looking at there, Thomas? <laughs> oh, no, I just, you know, the camera's not bad either, you know. It's, uh, it's, it sounds well, good. I mean, the iPhone 4 camera is nothing to, you know, <laughs> it's got a pretty good camera, so I, I like to think we're catching up a little bit on that front. <laughs> yes, the camera, the camera on the, as, as Trey likes to call it, the sweet, sweet Nexus is uh, lovely. I believe that's sweet, sweet lady Nexus. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> All right, hey, all right, Topher, you got to get back control of this thing. We only have five. No minutes. worries. We got five <laughs> minutes, and then we got to cut it off because I got to, I got to cut this on YouTube and and all that action. So anyway, uh, you're the man for five minutes. Go. Sounds great. Thanks, Trey. You know, actually, that camera phone conversation does bring up an interesting point. You know, Joseph brought up how Canon cameras don't have GPS, and others do. You know, your camera phone is an exceptional camera these days, and does include GPS data in a lot of your photos. So something to think about if you're looking to get new gear for us at Stuck on Earth. Um, you know, I guess one last time we can kind of go through the roll call and people can say, you know, where the audience can find more about them. So uh, Gina, why don't we start with you? Well, um, all I, uh, I, I don't need the audience to worry about me. I'm sure they're not. I just want to know, uh, I want Nicole to know that by tomorrow night I have some very serious rutabaga questions for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you, so you best you best be ready for them. I'll do my homework. <laughs> All right. Nicole, <laughs> you know, is one of our panelists on Wednesday night show. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, okay. Nicole, Nicole is our special guest on uh, Photo Talk Plus Wednesday night. So. Yeah. All right. Oh, great. Exciting. And Joseph, how about you? I'm Joseph Lanashke uh, on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else. Travel Junkie is Travel Underscore Junkie. You can find me online at PhotoJoseph.com or at ApertureExpert.com. Great. And Karen? Uh, you can find my voice work at KarenHutton.com. Um, I'm also part of a show here on Google Plus called Life Through the Lens, and that is tomorrow night. Yeah, baby. Thank you very much. That is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas, not very much. And uh, my photographs you can uh, find on Google Plus. I have a bunch of them. So see you around campus. And next up, Lisa. Are we just saying where to find us on the internet? Absolutely. Sounds great. Great. Um, yeah, so I actually have a blog, GameTheoryNinja.com. I'm an economist and game theorist in my spare time. And then obviously on Google Plus uh, is where most of my interesting photography is. Great. And Nicole? 
Um, Nicole S. Young, you can find me at Nicole blog, that's N-I-C-O-L-E-S-Y blog.com, and of course I'm on the Google Plus. And Thomas. The Google Plus. The Google. I'm Thomas Hawk. No, uh, <laughs> you can find me at thomashawk.com, uh, on Flickr, on Google Plus, on any of these sites, just search for Thomas Hawk and I'll show up. And I also should plug the show because Nicole is our featured guest. And, and that show rocks. One of our Thank panelists. You. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, my co-host Lotus Carol and I uh, host a show every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time called Photo Talk Plus. And so uh, we'll be on this week and come watch live. Or Great. be in the chat. That's where we'll, we'll be in the chat harassing you. Yes. Don't come yeah. hungry because I'll probably be sharing food photographs. Nicole so, will be sharing yeah. food, porn, food porn, I think they call it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for everybody here at Stuck on Earth, you can visit the Google Plus page at Plus Stuck on Earth. If you have a specific top 50 question, you know, we'd love to hear it. Uh, you can plus mention me at Topher Martini or join the Flickr discussion group. And last but not least is Trey Ratcliffe. Uh, well, I guess everyone knows where to find me, so uh, I'm not going to say any of that nonsense. But uh, yeah, if you if you uh, please follow everybody that's here in the panel because uh, they're all most excellent people, and I endorse them and everything they do wholeheartedly. Um, I thank them all for their time. I thank you, Topher, for all your time and attention to this thing. It's it's great now, and it's only going to get better because of all the excellent people involved. So. Uh, thank you all very much. I appreciate you all um, quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll end the broadcast now and uh, just all kind of wave peacefully goodbye. <laughs>